What's up with my P family? It's your boy LAPA coming through with another video. You guys already know what it is, man. I'm right here for the YGs, the reoffenders. Um, many senses, as you guys know, telling stories by way of my experiences. Uh, that kind of serves as a reminder, right? As a reminder, uh, yeah, there's a reminiscent aspect to it, but don't get it, don't get it twisted, right? Don't get it messed up. It's not to glorify or to give you the nostalgic feeling to where you could go back to it. No. This is not something you want to go back to. And as you could tell by the good old caption, that thumbnail, that unya, that unya, right? Closed lined, beat up at the gang unit. So, I want to take you back, man, uh, 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 to around, what fucking was this? This was like, maybe like 2001, 2000, one of those two years. Uh, it was the early thousands, and uh, I was chilling with Lynn Dillon, right there on uh, 15th and Spurgeon. Uh, that's where my neighborhood, the neighborhood I was from, the neighborhood that I grew up, the neighborhood I'm always gonna have in my heart. But um, that's just because that's part of my past, you know. I was chilling right there, and uh, it was a couple of the homeboys, you know, a couple of the homeboys. And uh, before you know it, man, uh, 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 you know. So let me let me give you a little backstory. So for those of you that don't know, they're not familiar with the gang unit shit and, and how the gang units roam around the neighborhood. At, whatever time of day we used to have to be on our toes all the time you know the gang units in our neighborhood were always trying to creep up on us you know uh, even the regular cops um for those that know about my city santana santa Ana, california southern california um you know that the regular hoodas in our neighborhood in logan and logan specifically um the regular cops used to have to come to the neighborhood in jeans or something comfortable so they could run right they used to come to the neighborhood in jeans a t-shirt and, and, and like cross trainers regular tennis shoes because um we ran from them you know we were never we never fucking for the most part we never fucking let them push up on us we never let them stop us uh, they had to catch us you know we were helping fences doing our thing uh it is what it is uh footnote i remember one time man <laughs> one of the gang units man uh caught up to me whatever and after he snatched me up he was talking to me he's just like hey man why don't you tell these little youngsters little kids to stop running from us and i was like what the hell are you talking about it's not like we're telling them to run from you he's like man we got eight year olds seven year olds running from us and shit and they're like we're not even chasing these little kids man and they're running from us and shit i started laughing man because i knew exactly what the hell he's talking about you know the little homies uh the little kids you know they try to emulate you know what i'm saying they try to uh, uh follow our example especially the homies, the older homeboys in the neighborhood and shit. So I, I kind of got the picture in my head. Like I could imagine the little kids running from the cops and shit. Um, at this point, like either when I was running or other times that I ran from them, they got away. That's what he was telling me about. Cause I get this at this point, he was looking for me. Right. And I had gotten away from this motherfucker, man. And he knew the fuck I was running from him. And, you know, by the time I get into a house or alleys or whatever the fuck, I'm gone. You know what I'm saying? But I guess in one of these situations, one of the little youngsters got a, uh, started running <laughs> with me. <laughs> I couldn't imagine how funny that shit must have been. But, yeah, man, it was just one of those nights just to give you a little background on how it is. Um, we're chilling right there, pretending the Spurgeon, going back. And, uh, and, and it was maybe about 1, 1 or 2 in the morning, somewhere around there. And I got a lot of stories like this, guys, but this is just one of them. Uh, we're posted up, and then we see we see the fucking black eyes coming down Spurgeon with the lights off. They were coming down Spurgeon with the lights off. And then the homie had a strap. I didn't have the strap. The homie was strapped up at the time. And But when you're posted up, you know, it doesn't matter. Whoever has duty has duty is what it is. He happened to have it on him at the time. So we see him. We kind of dug down and he starts speeding up. He kind of seen us. Boom, we hit the alley, we break. And we get all the way to Bush. From Spurgeon to 15th, all the way down to Bush and 15th, but through the alleys. And when we get out to the sidewalk on Bush, I look to the left, he looks to the right, and I tell and I see the black eyes, another black eyes. They, were, they set a trap. They, bas they basically set a trap at us and trap on us. 
And I told the homie, like, hey, go. He's like, you sure? Go, dog. So I told him to run the other way. I ran straight for the placa. Now, at the, at the time, I'm thinking, like, yeah, it's so sacrifice, but I was still going to try to get away. Like, make no mistake about it. I was still going to try to get away. And uh, so what happens? So I start running. I start running towards the, the placa. Boom, 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 boom. I start running towards him. And, dude, like, I would have literally got away. I would have legit got away. But what happens right when I get to the fucking cop car? This is at 1 or 2 in the morning, like I said. No way that I even picture that there was going to be a passenger cop in that car. So what happens right when I get to the car? And this fucker waited for me, too. He could have very easily... He could have very easily got out the passenger side and, and, and waited for me. But no, what did he do? The smart dude. He opened the door right when I was getting to the passenger door. Opened the door. I was like, oh, shit. We tried to pass him. Boom. That fool closed line me like he was part of fucking, uh, fucking, uh, <laughs> fucking UFC, fucking WWE, WWF back at the time. <laughs> Man, bro, that shit was fucked up. So they tackle me, boom, he tackles me, closes line me, you know, of course, my momentum, all that fool had to do was put out his arm, and he took me down. So when he took me down, boom, I hit the floor, boom, whatever. Um, did it hurt? I mean, I don't I don't know, I don't remember. Um, but I, all I know is when I went down. And so the other dude comes across me, grabs me, boom, boom, they start fucking me up, man. They, uh, they stomped me off for a little while. You know, I got a couple black eyes, everything. They stomped me up. They fucked me up. Um, threw me in the back of the car. Um, and they were like, where's your homeboy at? Where's your homeboy at? We seen you with them. Where's he at? He has a gun. What does he have? I was like, man. In my mind, I'm thinking like, the fuck up, you know? But what do they want? They're like, take us to him. Where do he go? I was like, okay, I'll take you to him. He said, all right. So we started driving. Man, I took these motherfuckers away to the other side of 15th and fucking uh, Durant over there by Ross, by the Big Saver. By that time they figured out that I was misleading them. They <laughs> uh, needless to say, when the, before we got to the police station, they put hands on me again. You know what I mean? But, uh, uh, but the good thing, is, I guess at the time, I'm thinking, man, like, you know, at least the camarada got away. You know, I bought him some time, um, you know, because there was another cop car too. You know what I'm saying? There was another cop car. There was a few of them looking for us and shit. So at least I bought him some time at the time. I'm thinking, you know what I'm saying? My homeboy got away. And he did. He got away and shit. You know, I ended up getting locked up. And that was that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hit the halls and fucking started fighting motherfuckers. And I didn't get out till like a year later. You know what I'm saying? Like, I went in there for a violation. They called my PO. I was in the halls. I was in Unit Z at the time. Uh, they called my PO and shit the next morning. And they were like, hey, man, this is what happened. So-and-so, he's like, no, nah, violated his ass. Violated me. And then for every fight I got time, it was what it was, man. For those of you who know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. It is what it is, you know. Obviously, looking back, man, it's just another neighborhood story. Uh, something like it's a precaution, like a caution, cautionary tale. Um, yeah, man, you know, we were doing what we were doing. But at the end of the day, it's not worth it. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, it's not worth it. I uh, was wasting time in my life, you know, even though, like I said, it's nostalgic. I, I have good memories from my homeboys and shit like that. But at the end of the day, I was shooting myself in the foot. You know, I could have been in school and shit. I could have been doing something more productive with my life, but I did it. And that's just what it was. But that being said, man, you guys hit the like button to subscribe. Appreciate every single one of you for being on the channel. Love you guys, man. I'm trying to be more consistent, man. I'm going to keep dropping videos. Start dropping some lives real soon. That's what it is, man. And you guys already know. One life saved is one life blessed. A smart man learns from his mistakes, but a wise man learns from other people's mistakes. APA, I'm out.